Hey, this podcast is brought to you by RockCon. I know this uh, might be have already passed, but September 13th, 14th, we are going to be here and we would love for you to join us. Get in the house. It's going to be an amazing time. Register and we'll see you soon. Hey, welcome to the Rock Life Podcast. Today we are jumping into judgment. Wow. Judgy, judgmental. Jumping into what judgment. What can we do? What shouldn't we do? What does the scripture al allow us to do or even call us to do? We're going to be talking about all that juiciness. I'm here with Pastor Dan. What's up, Pastor Dan? I, I'm, I'm good. I just feel like you're judging me. <laughs> well, I do want to know what, what is up with this shirt. It's very much giving Trader Joe's. I mean, can I say that? I, um, I'm looking for the name tag. I shop at Trader Joe's. <laughs> well, there you go. I do love the store. So and, is uh, there a like, I mean, again, I, is there a reason? Well, there's there's it's twofold. Um, and most people are probably thinking because the end of summer is coming at us rapidly. And yes, yes uh, you know, we're not. Uh, I'm one of those guys like when pumpkin spice comes out yeah. late summer, yeah. I'm I'm judging. OK, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like put that away. Right. I don't like you. I want, I'm I'm I'd much rather be hot than cold. Well, it's it's awkward to be triple digits and be thinking pumpkin about spice. Fall. Yeah, yeah, it's like get, get that out of my face. Yeah. You know, it's like Costco putting Christmas out right now. Yes. I'm like, it's dude, it's seriously. Bizarre. It's bizarre. Yeah. But I mean, there's people that are already putting yeah. stuff up and doing that. But um, so, yeah, end of summer. But, uh, you know, in the mountain communities right now, we've got some terrible fires. Mm -hmm. uh, some of you listeners out of state and that sort of thing may not know this, but we have what's called the line fire. If you look it up online, you can see it. And uh, terrible, terrible mm -hmm. mountain communities yeah. are at risk right now. And so this morning, uh, my wife reached out to one of our friends up in the mountains and they sent a picture of themselves back with a Hawaiian shirt on. And they said, we're trying to bring that Hawaiian shirt energy today. Oh, come on now. And uh, and they were remembering because they, they used to attend the rock and now they're at a, at a church up closer to them up in the mountains. Mm -hmm. And um, and so they were saying that they were remembering some of Pastor Deborah's messages on fear what we're looking at and wow. so they're just trying to look to jesus but they're bringing the hawaiian shirt energy so i'm bringing come on the hawaiian shirt energy we're standing in solidarity with the mountain communities yeah. we're praying for you guys for those of you that are listening uh probably later i would imagine mm. you've got more important things to do right now than listen to a podcast <laughs> but um but later on when you hear this just know that we're praying for you we're standing with you guys we love you and uh, we're bringing that energy as well yeah. so yeah no see see you totally misjudged me you were like trader joe's <laughs> And, uh, you and know, you're just over here being pastoral, you're, you're right? eating organic. Yeah. I'm, I'm bringing the energy. I'm, I'm standing in solidarity right. with that's people good. that are, you and know, you notice, I can see, I, I can see that's your vibe today. You know, very, very Hawaiian shirt. And that's, it, it is. That's it cool. Is. Yeah. No. And, and I love the summer. I but gotta you say, know what? To, I mean, and obviously we're, we're dating ourselves in terms of the date, but after a few, probably seven or 10 days of triple digits, yeah, I think it's actually supposed to be in the 80s today. It's nice, which is like yeah. That's why I wore a long sleeve shirt. Now you look fall. I, I it's kind of you like got my the ode. forest green. It's my ode to cooler weather. Is that right? I'm bringing it in. I'm trying. Anyways. I mean, you just to me, you look hot. Thanks. Yeah, not not like <laughs> that. Not like that. So. No. Yeah. It, I mean, uh, well. So I like to keep. I, I like in the office for it to be. Now the office is chilly. Yeah. Yeah. No, they so they do blast us with the cold air. Yeah. yeah. You can wear something like that when you're working. So there've been times where I've worn something like this and been cold, yeah. like literal shivers. Yeah. You know, where um, I had to go and grab like a blanket or something like that. So yeah. Um, shout out to San Bernardino Police Department. They gave me a blanket, and so I usually am wrapped up yeah. in that one. You well, know. I've, I mean, I, I I wondered if I was gonna get. I've been wearing a lot of t-shirts. Yeah. Uh, because it's been so hot. So mm -hmm. I was like, and, and I'm kind of out of dry cleaning, so I'm. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. <laughs> uh, but so, yeah, actually, probably the first time not wearing a T-shirt for a while. Time to wash your clothes. bro. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Anyways, Judgments. Pastor, <laughs> so you see all my all, how do you know that my clothes are dirty? They're not yeah, dirty. dirty. Um, we, this was a great weekend. Uh, we finished uh, chapter one. Yeah. And we launched got in chapter in, two. In, well, how many weeks was that? Because that felt. Ah. And you, you did tell us. That expect to slow down, but yeah, yeah, no, I, I mean, the pace we went through those last three messages, we, yeah. we took chunks of verses, um, and and it was it was intentional, just because I wanted to keep the context and not focus so much, yeah. And you know, when you've got a list of twenty two sins, it, with you know, if we did a three or even a four point message, yeah, my goodness, you know, you're you're right. into like five messages just on the sins that yeah. are listed there, and I don't know how much it would edify the body to know the definition right. of some of those things um, well, I, I like that i like when we take the bigger chunks because i get the helps me to understand the full picture right 
in the scheme of the story too. Right. So that way, when we when we go through, like, oh, I understood it in the whole of what the the whole letter was saying. Right. So where sometimes it gets like, oh, I, I forgot we're in the letter. That's where I'm trying to review too, because yeah. if you notice, I continue to point back to the fact that the gospel is introduced. Mm-hmm. And that with the gospel being introduced, all of a sudden the wrath of God is also introduced. Right. Because the, there's good news, but until you understand the bad news, you won't really yeah. appreciate the good news. See, and I like that. There's kind of like the callback. Right, yeah. Uh, which it, it makes it, oh, okay, this is not, just, you know, even the mini series, you see it within the scope of Romans right. and the, what, what, what's true to the letter at large. Which Although points back to verse one, which is who I am, what I am, and why I am. Yeah. I, I am what I am by the grace of God, right? Mm-hmm. And, and the gospel brings that grace into my life. Right. And so it, it, it all goes back to that. And, and what I am and why I am is because of the righteousness of God mm-hmm. and the holiness of God that's imparted through that that grace. And so, I mean, we're, we're going to see that. And then obviously chapter four, we're talking about faith. Yeah. I mean, there's some real significant things about that, that first verse mm-hmm that that is just the seed of everything else that that blossoms into this book yeah so you know it with that comes you know we we were talking about this the righteousness of god well there are people that are Mm self-righteous and self-righteousness also brings criticism and judgmentalism right Mm -hmm. where where people are going to look down their nose at others because i'm better than you yeah you know and whether that's a class thing a race thing whether that's education whether that's economics um, we have a way of working our way into I'm better than you. I mean, even even people who are, you know, in life, by and large, and this is not to put anyone down, but by and life, you know, by and large in life, over all their failures. Well, if, if I'm just not as bad of a failure as someone else, yeah. like people will look down their nose. Uh, I mean, even criminals do this. Right. right. Well, I, I'm not doing what they're doing. Yeah. You know, I, I may be stealing things from, out of people's houses, but I'm not harming anyone. Right. You know, no one's no one's getting hurt. Yeah. And, and they don't realize like, hey, you're, you're still just as bad. You're still deserving yeah. uh, of, of the wrath and the punishment of God. And and even the greatest, uh, you know, most moral people, really, that's really what Romans 2 starts talking to. And then it talks to the religious later on in the chapter. But I think these two groups really could get lumped in because the religious are moral. Yeah. Um, the moral, you know, they, they magnify the problems. Uh, the religious, they distance themselves from the problems. Yeah. Well, and I, I think sometimes I was talking to somebody recently about self-righteousness and, and what it does, because I know uh, the way I grew up, you know, borderline legalistic, religious, depending on your perspective, it leans a lot on self-righteousness yeah. because what you're doing is you're saying, I'm refraining and or right. I don't do this. And because I don't do this and you do that, it puts me in this position. What was what I find interesting in that judgment is, and we've heard it said before, when you compare somebody, someone gets smaller. Mm. What is not true is that someone act gets bigger. Though, no, right. Like you didn't get bigger. Someone else just got smaller. Well, I think the, the even the word belittle. Right. 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 You're, you're causing someone to be little. Yeah. By by putting them down. Yeah. And so that that word in itself yeah. is, is very telling. And that's mm-hmm. what you find judgmental people do. They belittle others. I'm I'm better than you. They they're comparing because they want to make themselves look better, bigger, yeah, yeah. and better, and they want to f- put down someone else, mm-hmm. and uh, and it, and it really doesn't do much good. Yeah, you know. And I I had a lot of experiences as a teenager, and and um, you know, uh, just that pride and that that uh, you know, I was raised in a in a Christian home, in the sense of going to church and that sort of a thing, and and um, you know, knew the Bible. I uh, had gone to Christian school for a couple yeah. of years, you know, and, mm-hmm. and so um, knew, knew, like, at one point, I think I had all 12 disciples' names memorized. Oh, wow. I, I probably couldn't do that today. Yeah. Um, but That'd be tough. Yeah, yeah. I know some <laughs> of them in there, you're like, wait a second. <laughs> and, yeah. and there's different lists, too, yeah. so it's like, which list are you going right. by? You know, oh, but, yeah. but at the same time, you know, uh, so there was a whole lot of that in me, and I hadn't done the things that my friends had done. Mm-hmm. And so it was easy for me to judge. Yeah. You know, and even after I got saved, it was it was still an issue that mm-hmm. I had to put under the power of the blood and and let God work with me. And definitely, you know, when I married my beautiful wife, she helped me with that in the <laughs> most kind and sure, wonderful sure. way. <laughs> Absolutely. I loved every moment of of that process. Yeah. <laughs> And you're not lying at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, yeah. Uh, it, I'm sure your well, wife helps you with that, too. <laughs> absolutely. In, in the most oh, yes. peaceable and Yeah, and it, I, again, it just feels way. so... Yeah, it feels good, doesn't yeah. it? Well, you know, 
we can talk about how judgmentalism is bad all day. But I think you, not I think, you also spoke in the message uh, th- about the contrast, which is what can be rightly judged right. uh, versus judgmentalism. I think, you know, talking to our, our church family, um, I, I think it could be a common struggle. How do we make that distinction between what we rightly judge and how to keep from being judgmental? Because we know judgmentalism is a turnoff for everybody. Yeah. For believers and non-believers alike, and if we want to um, be a good witness, and I think that's what it boils down to for many of us. We are, we know we are full-time ministers. We know we want to see salvation. We know we want to see the Inland Empire saved, mm-hmm. and a lot of that is going to be by our our witness outside of the four walls. Um, so we need to kind of be better at this, right? Where we're not judgmental, we're not judgmental, but we can still judge things rightly. And then when do we need to do that? Well, I'm going to judge you rightly because you know what comes to mind? The statement of you can win the conversation, but lose the, the I don't know, the win sales. Win the argument, the, yeah, but lose the yeah, sale. Yeah, yeah. Is, is the, Where it's like the, the same term, thing like, yeah. okay, cool. You pointed out my flaws. I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. Right? Where, you yeah. know, but I was rightly, I judged rightly. You know, wh- when? Well, I think that, that speaks to the spirit in which it's brought because even, uh, you know, when we when we think of judging, we only think of of judgmentalism. Mm-hmm. But uh, if we think of a judge in a courtroom, they have to make a decision. They have to make a determination, and um, you know whether or not they agree with uh, it in their in their I don't know their psyche, their flesh, uh, you know whatever that is. Um, whether it's comfortable, I guess is the, yeah. the terminology, yeah. or not. They still have to bring that judgment. Yeah. And, and I think for a Christian, it's not that we like telling people that they're going to hell. It's yeah. not that we like telling people that their actions are wrong. Mm-hmm. It, it's not that we enjoy telling people that their destructive habits mm-hmm. are going to bring them down the wrong path. No one likes that. Right. Right. You know, um, we're not going to enjoy that. Um, however, we have a responsibility, number one, to judge by the Word of God, yeah. judge by the Spirit of God. Uh, but number two that in that judgment to bring that with a spirit that says, Hey, I'm in the same boat, mm-hmm. right? Because yeah. if, if I'm not careful, yeah, I'll fall into the same sins like Romans told us. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. And that's why I think uh, the apostle Paul said, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, lest you also be tempted. Right. right. We, we can fall into the same things that anyone is doing. You know, it's, it's like people judging, someone that fell into a moral failure and being like, Oh gosh, they're so awful. They're so horrible. And then later on in life, they find themselves as an adulterer, you know, or addicted to pornography or something like that. And yet they want to judge the person that they saw on television or, you know, in the news and they're, they're judging. But then, you know, many times what we judge, uh, you know, I've heard pastor Joel say this for years with breaking free, what you judge, you become. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Even, even my dad one time told me, he said, it's crazy because, you know, as you grow older, and he said it in such stark terms. He said, you become the thing that you hate. Mm. And I thought, oh, my gosh, yeah. that's so like, yeah, such a crazy thought. And, and what would make him think that, you know, he was better than his father. He, he didn't do the things that his dad did. And yet he saw characteristics that he had probably judged yeah. in his dad that now he was exhibiting in his own life. Right. And I think that's where we have to be careful that that when we make a decision mm-hmm. based on the word of God, a determination, if you will, and, and we'll call that a judgment, right. that we don't become judgmental, right. which means that we're now criticizing, we're now putting that thing down, we're looking down our nose at it, or, yeah. th- or thinking that we're impervious or you know, uh, impenetrable. Yeah. A- and that's where we, we, we're wrong. We have to make those determinations, those judgments, in a spirit that says, hey, I know that I could deal with this. I know that I yes. could struggle with this. I, I like know the that. devil could throw this at me. You know, no matter how bad it is. Yeah. Right. Uh, I would never do drugs. Mm-hmm. Well, prescription drugs might right. yeah. be a problem for you in the future. Yeah. You know, um, I would never commit adultery. Well, pornography might right. be. And, right. and Jesus said, if you lust yeah. after someone in your heart, you've yeah. committed that act already. I would never murder anybody. But do you hate someone? So th- I would maybe say that that's the spirit of high horsiness. Ooh. Right. Where so I can see the differences if I'm on my horse and I'm telling you. Versus me coming down from right. my horse, yeah, yeah, and kind of like saying, "Hey, maybe our, in that con- we're talking about the practical application of this could be when I struggled with this, 
yeah. fill in your blank, right? Yeah, sure. Um, this is kind of how I did. So I, now I'm not evading telling the truth, but I'm also not, I'm kind of coming down to a place where like, hey, or uh, hey, when I struggled with that same thing you were in, right? right? Uh, or when I, when I, you know, there, if someone's witnessing to someone that is uh, smoking weed or something like that, hey, when I was smoking weed, this is what I did to stop, or this is one of the things I noticed in my life. And this is what helped me versus you should just stop smoking weed because it's like like when good, you know, good and well you used to smoke, too. Right. Like, yeah. so I think those are maybe maybe I, I can see that and would also speak to the heart behind, you know, you, you talked about the example with your dad. It, it could be like, well, if my m heart motive was because I'm not going to be like that mm -hmm. versus because of a genuine relationship with God right. or because you know, hey, I'm going to be there for my kids, not because I care to be around my kids, it's because I'm not going to be like my dad who was never around me, you know, yeah. type deal. Um, could that be some of the the ways that could get us on the other side of? Yeah, I think we all have to check our motivation. Right. You know, like you're saying, what what is your motivation? If it's just to check a box, right. you know, that I'm not going to do what my dad did, you know, and so you're with the kids. Um, are you really connecting? Mm -hmm. Are you really imparting? Are you really, uh, you know, putting values and, and things into their lives that they need for their future? Yeah. You know, if your motivation of being with your kids is because I love my kids and I want the best for them and I enjoy them and I want them to enjoy me and, and have access to me and that sort of a thing, you know, then that's going to be a totally different experience. And, um, and, and same thing, you know, if, if someone's smoking weed and, and you have an opportunity to speak into their lives and, and you're looking at them down your nose and it's going to be, you shouldn't smoke weed. And then all of a sudden the lies come in that the enemy wants to put in there. The Bible says not to smoke weed. Well, they're going to come back and say, well, where does it say right. that? And they'll never see it plain yeah. spelled out. Yeah. Right. But the Bible does talk about being subject to the governing authorities. Mm -hmm. Well, it's legal now. Okay. But it also talks about being sober minded. Right. And anything that takes you out of your, your natural mindset, yeah. you, we shouldn't do, yeah. right? And, and that when we open ourselves up to those things, we actually open ourselves up to the spiritual realm. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand that, that a lot of times when you see those words that are associated with, uh, you know, what we, where we get our word pharmacy from mm -hmm. is pharmakeia, yeah. things like that, that oftentimes the occult practices, things like that, and, uh, you know, people would, would use these intoxicating drugs in order to open themselves up to the spirit realm right. and to the demonic things that we we understand we know now if your heart is i genuinely want them to have the best life right. to not put themselves in a place where the devil can can work with them you know and, and i want them to live a life that is productive i want them to be in their right mind yeah and, and then as well i think the things that we don't know you know we talked about context matters right yeah. why are they smoking weed right well, it's the thing to do, right? Everyone's doing it. It's popular. They mm -hmm. like the feeling, right? So we've got a couple things going on. One is is that they could be insecure because they didn't have a good upbringing. Right. And so their friends that are smoking weed, actually, they're looking to them for approval. And so that's where we can bring the, the, the good news that, yeah. hey, you don't have to strive for approval. You're already approved in Jesus, right? right? God loves you unconditionally. Now, that doesn't mean that his approval is unconditional. Yeah. He disapproves of being out of your mind, right. but you don't have to strive to gain God's approval. God is welcoming. God's loving. He, he, he'll he receive you as you are. Right. It, it might also be that they want to be out of their mind because they want to escape the pains of the life that they're living. Right. And if we address those root causes without judgment, like, hey, I know that there's things going on in your life. I want to let you know that I'm here, mm -hmm. but God's here to help. Yeah. And, and we love you. And listen, there's no judgment. Yeah. Right. We all stumble in many things, you right. know, and, and like for a person like me, I've never smoked weed. Right. So real quick, because you said there's no judgment, which is true because you you're not judging the person. And, and I'm trying to track. Well, you're I not guess the judgmentalism. You, you, well, yeah, right. You know? you, um, that, and that's what I mean. Like, so you judged in terms of what is right and wrong. Yeah. A situation. But you're not judging this person in, in where they're at, which would. Is that what maybe a practical distinction so, of judgmentalism? Yeah, because, because, right, the, the judgment is, hey, this the, is wrong, right? right? Yes. And, and it's a not you're wrong and you're horrible. And no, right. No. See, and I, I think that's the thing is it, a lot of times when when we tell someone this is wrong, they think they skip yeah. to I'm wrong. Right. Right. Um, I did this with my wife early in our, our marriage. I, we had to work on our language with each other so that we could, you know, move forward in our marriage. And, and so 
Um, my wife is, as many of you guys know, when she speaks, she's very blunt, you yeah. know? And so there'd be times that she'd say, hey, that's stupid. And, and, and I took that as you're stupid, right? right. And, and we had a conversation about that. She said, I never said you're stupid. I said, but, but what I did was, you said was stupid, yeah. you know? She goes, yeah. And I'm just like, well, that yeah. means I'm stupid if I'm yeah. doing it. And she goes, no, it doesn't, you know? And yeah. so we had to have that conversation. And so our language with each other had to, had to change, you know? And so um, we, we had conversations about words and, you know, things like that and hash those things out. And I had to, you know, get a little tougher in, yeah. the, in that area just because I was sensitive to it. But she was also sensitive to what words she would use with mm-hmm. me. And so we both met each other in the middle. And, and I think that there's a world out there that when the church is saying, hey, this is wrong, they're thinking you're wrong. Yeah. And, and that's where some, yeah. again, not all, yeah. because the world judges, oh, my gosh, yeah. Oh, yeah. just it's, as much yeah. more than we, the church yeah. does, you know, yeah. and yet they want to point the finger at us. Yeah. But it's like, you know, when, when they hear that, they think you're wrong, you know, and so they're, they're receiving that in, in a way that's not going to be productive. Now, yes, right. there may be some in the church that are self-righteous, religious, that are saying, yeah, you're wrong, yeah. you know, and we don't want you, and stay out, and, you know, all those things, or, or you better repent, you dirty sinner, um, but don't show your face in this church, go to another church where they, they accept yeah. people like you, you know, but, um, but th- that's, that's a small portion of the church. Most of the church is saying, hey, that's wrong, yeah. you know, not that you're wrong, but if you would bring that to the Lord, He can save you, He can work with you, He can clean you up yeah. he can move you forward in life and there's a lot available for you and yeah. and you know the 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 real christians are like we're here to help yeah you know and and so i think that's the distinction you know where where when we say there's no judgment what we're saying is there's no judgmentalism yeah here we're not criticizing and condemning you to death we're loving you to life and, and i like that and you, you did talk about that on the weekend and i, I wanted to get give you a case in point because i found myself actually this weekend in a situation we were at a family party and i'm having a conversation with someone and um, they're kind of telling they're asking me a question. Obviously, when someone finds out you're in ministry or you work at a church, right? All of a sudden, confessional. <laughs> yep. Exactly. Yep. It hey, happens. what do you think about this? And they kind of start to lay out, you know, and, and share how they are um, living with the mother of their child. Uh, and, you know, hey, you know, I know this is wrong. And but I found myself in full disclosure in an overcompensation to not be this judgmental guy, like almost I, I had to stop because I was almost going to skate around the judgment of truth. Sure. In other words, in the name of not being judgmental, I was going to evade the judgment of what's right and wrong mm-hmm. because I didn't want to make this guy feel bad. Uh, I, had, I had to catch myself because on the other side, you realize, that, again, we, we almost act as if people are going to be so sensitive. People do want the truth. They want it. So he was looking like, you know, like, so what do you think? Like, because he, and he's like, because I know it's wrong. And, um, but what do you think? And I'm just like, oh man, like now, obviously I'm not God. It's not my place to judge. But it, here, this was this opportunity for me. Okay. And so I had kind of had to, we went into a conversation, but I, but I felt like I got to tell him the truth in a loving place without being so judgmental where like he felt like he couldn't go home that evening. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And like, you know, like he's kicking somebody out or he's packing his stuff. Now I did give truth and, and some practical steps of things moving forward, what that could look like if he wanted to be not in right position with me. Right. And I think that's judgment. Like, Hey, this is, has nothing to do with, so I can love you or I can, you know, mm-hmm. so you can be around me. But like, Hey, if you want to be right before God and this yeah. is, you're saying, you want to be right before God, sure. especially once they open that door as well. I, I think that's the key is, is that there are people who have, you know, Jesus said, whoever has ears, let him hear. But mm-hmm. Here's a guy asking you. Yeah. And, and by his own admission, he already knows. Right. And a lot of times when people bring that stuff to me as a pastor, I'll say, well, you you just said it, you right. know. And, and that's where our conscience, number one, is is speaking to us, mm-hmm. you know. And and that would be where I would I would speak to that and call that out in him. Hey. You, you know what your conscience right. is telling you, and, and you know what the Word has to yeah. say, yeah. you know? So you're asking me, what do I think? Yeah. I think you already know. Right. And, and hey, but here's the deal. God still loves you. Right. We still love you, and we're here to help. And right. I think that's, that's where the world, in, in, in their sin, in their experiences, right. and, and in their, uh, you know, moving through life— they need to know that there is a way forward right. 
that gets them into the will and the way of God right. in, in doing practical righteousness. Right. Okay, so let's say we've got two Christians mm-hmm. that are yeah. sleeping together, right? Yeah. And, and here they are, they're afraid to come to church because they've, they know they've messed up. Mm-hmm. They know they're doing the wrong thing. W- when I have someone like that come to the church, my immediate thought is, is okay, where are they at? Where are their hearts at? And they, mm-hmm. we know where, you know, and they start having that language. Yeah. We know. Yeah. And, and they feel bad. Yeah. Okay, if they continue down that path, here's what's going to happen. They're going to sear their conscience. Mm-hmm. We know that from the Bible, right? right? And the things that used to be things that would make them feel bad now don't make them feel bad anymore. Now they're numb to those things. Yeah. And it won't just be sleeping around or it won't just be that, you know, living together and playing house, you know, whatever you want to call it. And, and sorry if you think that's judgmental. I mean, <laughs> Hello, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, let's, yeah. let's call it what it is. You know, and a lot of people say we're married. I've, I've yeah. had couples come to me and say, we've, we've been married for five years. Oh, really? That's awesome. Yeah. We were thinking about get, going, having a ceremony. <laughs> and it's like, you are not married. Yeah, you know, right. don't, don't call them your wife. Don't call mm-hmm. them your husband. However, you know, I, I think people do that because their consciences are seared and they're mm-hmm. numb to those things. And, and now they're accepting right. of worse things than they would have before, which opens the door to more behavior, to more deception, which mm-hmm. is where the devil works, right? Yeah. And, and, it, and it just, it's a slippery path down. My heart as a pastor is I love you. I don't want you to go down that path. I don't want the devil to, to you know, tear apart your lives in the future. So let's do this. Let's help. What does right. help look like? Hey, we'll, we'll get you married. Yep. You know, go down to the courthouse, get your get your paper, bring it into the office. We'll do an in office wedding, get you guys married. Uh, if you don't have the money for that, there's been times where I've paid it out of my own pocket. There's right. been times where the church has paid for it. You know, now that's not an offer to everyone, <laughs> but they're coming. This yeah. <laughs> hey, I heard. Yeah. You know, but I mean, I mean, seriously, if if it's yeah. that big of a deal, we're we're here to help. Right. You know, and. Uh, and, and then the other thing is sometimes people say, well, you know, we, we want to have a ceremony. We want to have a wedding, you know. Okay, then move out. Yeah. Phone a friend. Phone a family member. Do what you got to do. There was a guy, um, he was waiting for a, I've told this story before, I think, but um, he was waiting for an in-office wedding. They wanted to just come down to the church and get an in-office mm-hmm. wedding. Well, we have a policy that says you don't meet for two weeks just because our, our right. weeks are already scheduled, yeah. that sort of a thing. And so for me, it's even longer um, just because of my preaching schedule, but... Um, you know, people that are willing to wait can, but, uh, he was meeting with one of the pastors to try and do an in-office wedding. Yeah. And so they scheduled him two weeks out, not knowing that's all he wanted, mm-hmm. you know, otherwise they would have got him yeah. going right away yeah. for two weeks. He slept in the car. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, and I believe that there's a blessing of God mm-hmm. for obedience like that. Right. He thought, this is what I have to do. This is what I'm going to do. And God sees those things yeah. and rewards them, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, and I'm I'm always blessed when I see him and his wife in church, yeah. and and uh, they're just worshiping the Lord, man. It's awesome. Yeah, it's awesome to me. It, see, that's the thing is, is that there was no judgment. It's like, all right, cool, yeah. man. We'll get you. We'll get you married. And yeah. and then when I heard that story, I felt bad. I was like, oh man, <laughs> you know, could have been sleeping in yeah, the bed, you right, know. But right. but the neat thing is, is is look at look at their hearts for the things of God. We we know. We mm-hmm. know when we're doing something wrong. We right. know when we're doing the wrong thing. And, uh, and, and that admission opens the door not for judgment. And I think that's the thing in those conversations. There's times where people will reveal their hand. They're waiting for you to judge right. them. I know what the Bible says, but I'm going to do this anyways. And they're almost obstinate yeah. towards you. A- and that, that's where I know, hey, this is a closed door for any opportunity for these things. And, and what do I do in that instance? I just love them. All right. You know, and say, well, hey, you already know, you know, like. But let's talk about something else, you know? Well, so I'm thinking, Pastor, so going back to the, specifically the, the message and even the title, we're in, we're in part one of God's judgment versus man's. versus man's. And I can see how, from what you introduced, was how, how even the position of what judgment is and our approach to things, God does it a different way. And we saw that through yeah. a couple of scriptures what would be your thought or, or, or where do you feel like we're headed in? T- I mean, well, you know where we're headed in, t- in the upcoming weeks. But as you approach even the next part of the message and w- what's that big kind of takeaway or what, what should what should we walk away with? Um, our, our approach to God's truth and what his judgment versus how how we judge. Right. We want right. it. We if we want to position ourselves 
and align more like how God would act. Well, I, I would just encourage all of our listeners and viewers to read ahead. Right. And, um, you know, in, in those verses all the way down through, especially verse number 11, I think, if you uh, are, are just looking at this series, um, we're going to go into a, another series after that and not focus so much on the judgment of the religious, but, but really look at our actions and our attitudes. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's a part of it. Right. But um, uh, for this series, especially if you read ahead in verse num- to verse number 11, you'll find that there are attributes of God's judgment. Right. And really, uh, you know, when we, when we t- took a look at this first part, I wanted to introduce it, not only the topic, but also talk about not being judgmental. For the rest of the series, we're going to look at how to judge according to God's judgment. Because God's judgment versus man's judgment, we see that man's judgment often comes with judgmentalism. Mm -hmm. It's often flawed. It's often according to, like we said, those two things, appearances and experiences. And so God's judgment is according to truth. Now with that, there's some great, wonderful things that uh, are brought out in these upcoming verses. And with that, we'll see the characteristics of God's judgment Mm -hmm. as we go through those things. And so really the takeaway is going to be how do we incorporate those things into our lives? For this week, it's just working on that flesh that that wants to judge others and put people down and, you know, elevate self, right, which is pride. And and we have to put those things under the power of the Holy Spirit. We we can judge all things because we are spiritual people Mm -hmm. and we're rightly judged by no one. Um, However... Jesus, our Lord, said, judge not lest you be judged. And with the measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. Uh, uh, e- examine quick. yourself. Get the plank out, and oh, then yeah. you can help yeah. someone else. Uh, sorry, Pastor, I was going to say, that, that second part of that verse, the, and rightly judged by no one, meaning if we're walking according to God, we're not able to be, there's no, we can't be put under a microscope. So I think, I think that when, when it says rightly judged by no one, people are going to judge us as right, Christians. Right. However, the unspiritual don't judge right. Right. They're, they're going to see your actions. Um, you know, we use the, the, uh, the judgment. I, I gave the example of Charles Spurgeon, him and his wife had chickens. They would sell the eggs. People yes. judge them that you, you're this pastor, of this big church and you're selling the eggs mm-hmm. like you should be giving them away. Right. right. Their judgment was you have enough money yeah. and you're greedy um, and so you're wrong. Right. Little did they know he was selling those eggs and giving the money to fund right. an orphanage. Right. Their judgment was wrong. Their they, judgment no was wrong. Yeah. And, and I think that a lot of times with Christians, people judge us that you just told that person they're going to hell because you don't like them. Mm-hmm. Right. That's good. Rather than you really care about them and love them and don't want them to spend eternity in That's hell. Good. So their judgment is wrong. Uh, same thing with why we go to church, why we would give our money, why we would live holy, right. why we would abstain from things, you know, like alcohol or premarital sex right. or, or marijuana, like right. we talked about. You're just an uptight Christian. You're just this. You're, you're a just, holy roller, yeah, holier yeah. than thou, yeah. um, you know, and, and they wrongly judge us. You, even our motives, our mm-hmm. heart, they don't know. Yeah. They, they, they don't understand those things, right? Why? Because they're unspiritual. So mm-hmm. the, the, even the Word of God, right? The, the, there's people that I know that have read the entire Bible, right? I know Christians who haven't done that. Right. They've read the entire Bible, but because they're unsaved, their unregenerate mind can't understand and they can't judge correctly the things. And so when they look at the life of a Christian or, or the worldview of a Christian, they wrongly judge because they're judging according to their flesh yeah. and their own understanding rather than judging according to the Spirit of God. So we, when, when we do things, when we have a course, you know, people would look at our lives and say, why are you doing that? You know, yeah. what, why would you raise your kids like that? Why would you, you know, uh, live your life in, in such a way? Why would you go through all the things that you're going through? I mean, there's a lot of heartache, yeah. especially as a pastor. I mean, you're dealing with people's lives. Some get it and you have these wonderful highs. Many don't get it. And you have yeah. these terrible lows because you love people so much that when you see them make wrong choices or not, not get it, not, not get into the things of God, you carry that. Right. And so some people say, why, why, do, why not go work at, you know, we used to love working at the big box store, go yeah. become a manager, and, and then you can go to home and go to bed at night. Yeah. And, you know, there's better ways to make money than pastoring. Yeah. You know, you, you're an artist, you're a photographer, yeah. you're an author. Go, go make money doing that, you yeah. know. And, and, and why live in San Bernardino? Why not go live at the beach? Yeah. You know, California's got way better places. See, right. the judgment is off. Yeah. We're, we're rightly judged by no man. Right. I'm That's here good. because I'm on assignment. Yeah. I'm here because I love the Lord. I'm here because I love people. I'm here because I, I want to see positive change. And, and I think that's where many Christians, you know, they might ter- turn down a job promotion that takes mm-hmm. them out of the state. Right. Why? Because my church is here. Right. And people would judge wrongly. You're, you're crazy. Yeah. You know? 
We're rightly judged by no man because we're spiritual and we're looking at the Word of God making decisions for our lives. And so I think that's where, you know, people outside of that will get that wrong. Yeah. They don't understand. I, I'm just excited, Pastor, and I think about how, you know, it, the Holy Spirit lines us up because we are entering a season where we're almost being asked to judge, right? It's in our country, we're coming mm. up on an election yeah, wow. election year, and there's all kind of things going to be in front of us, even amongst other believers. And we're just going line. Here we are minding our business, going line upon line, and we're the Holy Spirit is preparing our hearts, preparing our church um, and, and our listeners and, and viewers you know, continue to get in church on the weekends yeah. and then continue to be here with us as we kind of recap and, and add different insights. I pray that you guys were encouraged and hopefully we answered some questions that you might have had. I thought this was a great conversation, Pastor, because um, we do want to be in right. And I, I, I know one of my my personal things is I, do, I don't want to be the judgy guy. I do. I do want to be able to approach and talk to somebody that doesn't believe like me with truth. Uh, and not placate to what they want because it's what they want to hear, um, but also like not on my high horse. Yeah. Right. Which kind of goes against our our flesh is gonna want us to do that, right? I would I, I our flesh wants us to be proud, and sure. and haughty and self righteous, um, but for the sake of people, and loving people and loving God, uh, this is really good stuff to know. And these are great verses and and. Again, a, a great presentation, Pastor Dan, and great message, and uh, you communicated it so well. And so we're looking forward I appreciate to the that. upcoming Thank weeks. You. Any yeah. any final thoughts as we close? Well, um, you know, I, I like I said, read ahead and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And then, um, you know, uh, I, I think just getting the words of Jesus and examining ourselves is always a good thing to do. It's one of the things I, I try and do daily is, um, you know, when, when I pray the Lord's Prayer, I look at that part that says, forgive us of our sins as we also forgive those who have sinned against us. And that's a that's an introspective time that you look at yourself and say, hey, what am I dealing with? What am I struggling with? Where, where are there things that are off in my life? And uh, what do I need to confess? What do I need to, to renounce and forsake and, and get rid of out of my life? And then when I forgive others, too, it helps you not to be judgmental because it's like, yeah, they might have said the wrong thing, but I don't know what they were dealing with before they came to work. You know, I don't know that they had an argument with their spouse or their kids were driving them nuts. And then they came in and barked at me, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And, yeah. and, it, and it helps us to have that introspective view to, uh, you know, I, I think I said this when we judge, we judge with a mirror. That's good. You yeah, know, and, uh, and and so when we look at ourselves, you know, and, and then looking at the judgment of God as we see God as the judge, we have to view God as the righteous judge, as yep. the just judge, as the perfect judge. That, that when we see his judgments, even though we may not fully understand them, well, why not? Why not, God? You know, a lot of times people want something, and so when God prohibits it, they say, well, why not? You know, because I want it. it but, but to trust a loving Father yeah. and to trust that His judgment sees the full picture. You know, He, he sees down the road that we don't see down. Past our, our temporary passing pleasures, mm -hmm. He sees to the eternal, and He sees that, that eternal reward as well as the eternal loss. And so we have to trust those things, and that's where... When we commit judgment to the Father like Jesus did, yeah. even Jesus going and bearing the cross, that even though we may go through something that, that if we judged it on our own, we'd say, I hate this, mm -hmm. right? I don't like this. That, that God sees to the other side. You know, and the Bible tells us that there were men and women who judged God righteous, who judged eternal more valuable than the temporary. And so they endured suffering and persecution and even death because they wanted to obtain a better mm -hmm. resurrection. Yeah. And, and that's where the heart of the Christian has to be. We have to be eternally minded and focused on, on God is good. And, and no matter what I see in this life or what happens to me or what people may do, I'm going to judge him faithful, that's judge good. him true, and live the way that he wants me to live because his judgment will be ultimately good for my life. Yeah. Eternally. Yeah. That's well said, Pastor. Great way, well, great way to button that up. Uh, God bless you guys, man. We, we subscribe. Hit the like button. Again, we're on Apple Podcasts yeah. now. Get Share it. Subscribe, and it'll auto automatically notify you when you get it. I, I'm, I'm all subscribed on mine, and so now I know when it pops up, so that's exciting. Awesome. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Much love.